What if the greatest threat to healthcare is the healthcare system itself? When I was seven years old, I accompanied my mom to the doctor's office. I acted as an interpreter. At the time, she spoke broken English. And I thought, wow, what a great opportunity. I get to go to the doctor's office at seven. Who would think such a thing? But I'll explain. When I went to the doctor's office, he handed us a sheet of paper. My mom had to get medication. He said, this is going to make her feel better. So we went to the pharmacy next door. I was thrilled to be there because they sold mojo candies, which were my favorite. So I went and waited at the candy section to see what flavors they had. When I heard my mom's name called, I walked over to the pharmacy counter. A very big, tall man with dark curly hair and glasses. And he said, hello, my name is Dennis, I'm the pharmacist, with great authority. He then began to explain the medication. Your mom has to take one capsule three times a day with food until finished, and if she gets a rash, you have to come back and see the doctor. He then leaned over at me, looked me square in the eyes, and said, make sure your mom takes this medication exactly like I told you. Otherwise, she could get harmed. I froze. What did he say? I didn't want my mom to get hurt. I was still thinking about which pennies I could use to buy my mojo candies. Now, I didn't know what to do. He was handing the medication to me in the bag, and it was time for me to go. I just muffled up all my courage, and I blurted out, was it one or two pills? What's a rash? What food? Dennis, the pharmacist, realizing my panic, explained it to me all over again. But still, I needed to make sure. So then I blurted out again. Okay, so my mom takes one pill when she wakes up and eats her toast, one pill when she has her soup, one pill when she eats her pasta, and we go home and we start it and takes it every single day until it's all finished. And yet, if, uh, if she has red on her body, we have to come back and see the doctor. Dennis was nodding his head. Yes, that's correct. Whew. I could breathe. I immediately felt better. Dennis was a superhero because he made sure my mom was safe. Personally, I loved Wonder Woman, but I cast Dennis in the same light. When I was seven years old, it was imprinted in me, this understanding that medications could help, but at the same time, if not taken properly, could cause harm. And as a 30-year clinical prescribing pharmacist, I have instilled this knowledge in my patients so that they had a safe medication outlook. It is so important to realize, though, in those 30 years, healthcare has become very complex. We now have over 20,000 prescription medications on the market. This does not include over the counter medications, vitamin supplements, or herbal products. And there was a study conducted, and it showed that in the past 30 days, you have 48.6% of the population using at least one prescription drug. 24.6% used three or more, and 12.8% used five or more. Our number one therapy to treat ailments and chronic conditions is medications. And yet, we just get a glimpse of the errors. In one state in America, 5 million 
Five million prescription medication errors were made at a pharmacy. There have been lethal overdoses of medications given in healthcare settings like hospitals, and medications that you can buy at a gas station causing permanent liver damage, and worse, death. The World Health Organization even has a World Patient Safety Day campaign. And in 2023, it was Elevate Your Voice for Patient Safety. I personally experienced this with my nine-month-old daughter, Marissa. She had had a fever for a few days, and I had worked five days in a row, 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. I was tired, I was cranky, I was hungry. But when I got home, Marissa had spiked a dangerously high fever. I knew something was wrong, so I immediately took her to the hospital emergency. We waited, it was busy, it was chaotic. We finally got to see the emergency doctor, and then it was agreed that we would check her urine. So we got asked to wait in a small little room, not much bigger than a broom closet. There was no chair, no bed. So I held Marissa, and I tried to rock her and comfort her so she could sleep, but she winced and wouldn't settle. So I thought, I'll just try breastfeeding her standing up, but she wouldn't latch. As time went on, I grew more and more worried. I just wanted her to have her big smile back. Finally, the pediatric resident came into the room, and she said, yes, Marissa does have a urinary tract infection, and here's the treatment plan, and here's the medication. And I thought, oh boy, that one? I know this medication. It had special calculations. I learned it when I was a pharmacy student. Because if the dose went too high, it would cause permanent kidney damage, irreversible hearing loss, and worse, death. So I asked the resident, what dose are you giving her? She replied. And in my confusion, because I was tired and I was overwhelmed, and worried, I thought, did I hear her right? What did she say? So as she was walking out the door, I had to now, as a mother, muffle up all my courage. And I blurted out, what, what dose did you say? How did you calculate the dose? She kind of was a little startled. And she turned around. She explained it to me, and in doing so, she realized she calculated the dose too high. But she just said it would get adjusted, and she quickly left the room. But she wasn't the villain. She likely had worked many 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. shifts, or worse, and more likely, 24-hour shifts in a row. And I understood why she promptly left, because as a healthcare professional, it's a gut-wrenching, twisting, nodding like a bag of rocks hits the pit of your stomach when you realize you've made a mistake. I broke down. As I was holding Marissa, her forehead and her hair were wet with my tears. I kissed her forehead over and over. I was relieved. You see, there was no cell phones, there was no internet to check the doses. I knew it from my education. But my moment to ask came from Dennis when I was seven. And I thought, this must surely be the reason why I became a pharmacist, to protect Marissa. And then, I saw the other sick babies and children in the hospital, and I thought, what about all the parents who aren't pharmacists? Who would protect their babies? I brought Marissa home to her brother, 
without a grave error because I advocated, communicated, and because of my education. My personal and professional experiences have pushed me to learn more about safety in healthcare. I became a certified patient safety officer, and one of the organizations that I follow is the Canadian Institute of Safe Medication Practice. And here, I came to learn about Melissa's story. Melissa's son, Andrew, eight years old, he was put on a medication called tryptophan to help regulate his sleep. Now, tryptophan is a very large tablet, and it's extremely gritty when crushed. Andrew was better on the medication, but it was a struggle to take it in this gritty pill form. So Melissa spoke to the doctor, and it was agreed that she could go and get the medication compounded into liquid form. So one Saturday morning, Melissa, as she had done before, picked up the medication, came home, put it in her fridge. That night, she measured the amount, she gave it to Andrew, tucked him into bed, gave him a kiss goodnight. The next morning, Andrew was lifeless. The family waited four months to find out what happened. They agonized, going over every detail from that day, over and over. When they finally met with the coroner, they were told that the medicine that the police officers took out of the fridge had a lethal dose of baclofen. There was no tryptophan in the bottle. And when Melissa described this, she said, how could this happen? We had no idea medication errors happened. We had full trust. Realizing her pain and knowing Andrew died from a preventable error, I had no words. Only heartbreak. Melissa represented one of the moms that I was so worried about when I was in the hospital with my daughter, Marissa. It is not a question of will an error happen, but rather a question of when will it happen. One in 10 patients is harmed in healthcare. Of that harm, 50% is preventable. And 50% of the preventable harm is caused <coughs> by medications. Three million deaths occur annually around the world due to unsafe care. Every time you seek healthcare, you're at risk of an error. Healthcare is complicated. But still, you cannot have full trust in a system that's imperfect, delivered by imperfect people. As a pharmacist, it was not my subject matter knowledge that protected. It was the knowledge that errors happened. I learned the skills to protect against preventable harm. The three key principles, A for advocate, C for communicate, and E for educate. With advocate, you remove the barriers so you can speak up. You lean into your intuition. You push for answers. You use your voice. With Communicate, you provide clear reporting of your health situation. You record and track. You take a pen and a notebook to every healthcare encounter, and you present your information in a truthful, clear, and concise manner. And with Educate, you learn the treatment plan. You do your research from credible sources. You ask the five W's. 
Why should I be on this medication? What will it do? How will it affect me? Where do I seek more information? And when do I stop it? You understand the risk versus the benefit, and you check on the treatment plan. Is it being delivered correctly? Is it being monitored? This is your ACE. You know, Wonder Woman, mm, she doesn't come to help. And Dennis, the healthcare professional, he wasn't the superhero. It was me at seven using my voice. The power to protect is within you. You are the superhero in your healthcare journey. Be empowered. Use your voice, be vigilant, and be armed with ACE so that you can remove the threat of healthcare itself. Thank you.